Hey, it's Steve Snyder here at Mojotone. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through how to build out one of our most popular kits of the Tweed Deluxe. Uh, it's about a 12 to 15 watt amp, runs on two 6V6s, a 12AX7, a 12AY, and a 5Y3. First off, you need a half inch nut driver. You need a set of uh, needle nose pliers. You can go with two different kinds here. I've got one, this one right here, which doesn't have any kind of uh, grip on it. Uh, the other set here, as you can see, has kind of a serrated edge to it. Uh, this is for getting in really tight spots where you need to hold a wire in place and be able to get in tight spaces. Next, you're going to need some wire cutters. A set of wire strippers. The only ones you're going to need this on is going to be the PVC cutted wire that's on like your transformers, that kind of thing. An adjustable wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, and of course, a soldering iron, and along with some solder. And what I like to do before I get started on an amp kit build is I want to go ahead and lay out all the parts. As you can see here, I've got everything laid out. You know, over here I've got my screws, nuts, and everything. I've got uh, my yellow hookup wire, green 18 gauge wire. Uh, next, you got your power cable. Then you've got your eyelet board. Then you also have your backer board, and that goes between the, the eyelet board and the chassis to keep everything from grounding out or shorting out. Next, you got your 5Y3 rectifier, your 6V6s, uh, your 12AX7 for V2, and then you got 12AY for V1. Over here, you got your output transformer. Next, you got your power transformer. You got your chassis. And then you also have your small parts kit. Inside of this is all of your resistors, caps, pots, uh, you name it. Okay, and here we have the three lug terminal strips. Uh, we include two of these to go with the kit and kind of leave it up to the builder to decide how they want to use them. Some people like to use them as different tying points for you know, wire junctions and such, and others use them as uh, grounding points, which is what I, I do in, in this particular case here. So what you want to do is get a piece of wire, and you can use the 22 gauge with this. And just pull back the cloth wire and you can actually pull the whole piece out with the needle nose pliers real easy. And what you want to do is take the piece of wire, you want to feed it through the center hole just like this. And you want to th basically thread it around into the outer loops or outer lugs. You want to loop it around into that lug and make a good solid mechanical connection. And then you want to do the same thing with the other lug as well. You can use the needle nose here to just kind of tighten up that connection really and make it real nice. Your center pin is now grounded and that wire now connects to outer lugs and makes them a grounding point as well. And you can install these three lug terminal strips pretty much anywhere you want. Uh, some people like to put them on one of the lugs for the output transformers or power transformers. Uh, for me, I like to try to get them as close to the where the power cable comes into the chassis. So in this case here, it's the rectifier tube socket. All right, once you finish all the mechanical stuff, now you want to go ahead and jump on putting together your eyelet board. What you want to do here is make sure that you have it lined up with your wiring diagram. So these three points right here are a real good reference point to make sure you get it aligned the right way. 
And then your first stage over here has got a bypass cap and resistor. This is a Sprague 25U. Your notice it's got a small little indention right here. This is the positive side. The other side is going to be your negative and it needs to go to ground. And one thing you definitely want to have when you're working on you know, these amps is you have the fumes that come off the solder. You definitely want to have some sort of uh, airflow that pulls the fumes away from you because you really don't want to breathe this stuff in. So you see here I've put together just a, a simple little four PC fan that runs off a little 12 volt adapter that doesn't move a mass amount of air but it doesn't move enough to help pull the fumes away. Next up you got your filter caps for this particular build. And these you definitely want to make sure that you have pointing the right direction as far as the ground. As you can see here, they got again you got the little dimple just like in the other ones. Uh, that's your positive lead, and you see the arrows pointing towards your ground. And last you got on here you have the big five watt resistor, and that's gonna be your cathode resistor. As you can tell it made to put out a lot of heat. We also have your cathode bypass cap. And because this is a 5 watt resistor and does put out some heat, you want to make sure that when you're installing this thing, that you make sure that you give enough space away from the resistor so that it's not sitting right upon it and burning it or melting it. Something I want to point out on here, if you're looking at the wiring diagram, you see this one particular wire that comes in off your B plus. Then it kind of goes gray and goes up underneath this. What that is, that's indicating that wire runs, those wires all run underneath the board. Uh, just like this, this one. Ones that lead out here to your B plus for your preamp tubes. And the one that's the signal wire from the front. Alright, so next we're going to start adding the jumper wires off the main board here. Well, I like to uh, cut a piece probably about uh, about four inches long. And what I'll do is I'll push back the cloth wire so you can see the wire right there. And what I like to do is I like to take needle nose and just make a nice little hook. Something to just kind of hook into the eyelet. Just like that. And once you do that, then you can just go ahead and solder up the wire. Now comes the fun part of getting your fiberboard installed in the chassis. And you see here we've got two different mounting holes that are already drilled in the chassis. And what I'd I like to do is I'd like to try to find a point on my board here that I can line up to where those holes will go in between two components. Kind of like right here, which we can put up underneath that capacitor, and between those the cathode resistor and cap and coupling cap right there. What you do is you take your backer board. What you want to do is lay it down inside the chassis, line it up with, the, with your, your reference point. What you want to try to do is try to get it about centered from uh, top to bottom here. 
once you've got that done there, what you can do is hold it in place, flip it over, get yourself a marker or a pencil or something like that, and then mark through these two holes of where you need to drill. You can see you got your two points right here where I need to drill. Once you have your holes drilled and your eyelet board and your backer board, now you're going to want to use the 632nd screws that came with the kit to attach everything together.
All right, when you get ready to test your amplifier, first tube you're going to want to grab is going to be your rectifier. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you align this locator pin, as you can see here, between pins 1 and 8. Now this pin is going to be the same as on any of the octal sockets. But your last one here is going to be your rectifier socket. So what you want to do is you want to visually line up that pin with the hole right there. And once you get lined up, what you need to do is press the clamps away. Make sure you're using the 5Y3 in this position here. Push the clamps away from the tube base and gently rock it back in place. And it will work its way right down. At this point here, what you want to do is you want to test for your B plus voltages, which are all going to be DC. What I'm going to do here is measure my AC voltages coming off the transformer and all my tube sockets. So what I'll do is I'll put an alligator clip on the ground, attach it to the chassis, power up the amplifier, let it start to draw some current. I'll measure my first 6.3 volt. As you can see here, it's reading 3.7, 3.7. That's half the voltage, basically. Check my voltages at my 6V6. Check it downstream at my 12AX7. And all the way down here at 12AY. That way I make sure I've got a good connection from one end to the other. If you're not reading voltages down here, that means you don't have a good solder joint somewhere along the lines. Now I've got my meter switched over to DC. Let the rectifier warm up a little bit. We'll test our first node. You see it's reading about 530 volts, which is pretty high, but that's okay because the amplifier right now is not under load, so those voltages will be pretty high. What you also want to do is go downstream to where uh, your B plus drives your preamp stages. For, there's the one for the 12x7. Make sure you got voltage there. Then you go all the way down here in between the two 100s. And that's your B plus for your 12AY7. So we're reading good voltage there. Go ahead and power it down. And notice after I power it down, there's still plenty of voltage on those filter caps. So definitely be careful if you have to go back in here and work. At this point, you can go ahead and after you powered it down, you can go ahead and put in your 6v6s. Make sure you align the pins just like you did on the rectifier tube. At this point, since you're putting in power tubes, you will need to make sure that you have a load on the output. So in this case, you can get it plugged into the internal speaker jack, which is this one here. And this one's your external jack. If you don't plug it in here, your internal one is now grounding. So that's why you want to make sure you always plug into the internal jack. And go ahead and plug in your 12AX7, ECC83. Just rotate it till your pins align where they're supposed to go. You go to put it in, just do a, a nice little wiggle and it should work itself right in. Here's your 12AY7. Goes in V1. Do the same thing you did with 12AX7. What I'm doing here is I put an alligator clip on the first node to read my voltages once it starts powering up. Notice there's still plenty of voltage on those filter caps. Because if you have any tube load on it, on it, it will not drain down very fast. So let's go ahead and power it up. And you notice that you're seeing 533 volts. But you can see it drop as the power tubes and everything else start drawing current. And 
here you can see where it's starting to idle out and just something to watch for here in case you're ever testing them make sure they're not red plating you'll see that piece of the metal right there that will turn a bright red if that's the case there you're not getting your bias supply on and it's red plating at this point you can plug a guitar in and start testing and make sure you get sound turn the tone cap all the way down or tone control all the way down make sure it's pulling out the highs back to center test it Rotate it all the way up, should have plenty of highs coming through. If you do get stumped to where your amp is not functioning um, and you need something to kind of go off, we do have a sheet that will give you different test points to test so you can get an idea of your voltages on the sheet here in case you get stumped you can always email us with hey what voltage am i getting at any one of these numbers here each one of these corresponds to different test points on the preamp tubes uh, and we'll help you pinpoint where your problem lies so in this case here i'm testing the cathodes so a good voltage across the cathode the first high voltage node this is what drives the output transformer this one goes to your power tubes as well. This one drives your preamp tubes. And that's how we put together the Tweed Deluxe Amp Kit. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email at tech at mojotone.com. Mm -hmm.